Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in today's episode, we're diving back into the upcoming election for third vice president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. The FCM, as many of you may know, serves as the national voice for municipal governments from coast to coast to coast, advocating for policies and initiatives that address the diverse needs of communities from across Canada. And with the annual FCM conference just around the corner, all eyes are on the bustling city of Calgary, where municipal leaders will converge to tackle pressing issues and chart the course for Canada's local governance landscape. But amidst the workshop, panels, and networking sessions, one pivotal event looms large, the election of the FCM's new board of directors. Among the esteemed candidates vying for the third vice president is none other than Strathcona County Councillor Katie Berghofer. In this episode, we sit down with Councillor Berghofer to discuss her candidacy, her priorities for FCM, and her vision for advancing municipal interest on the national stage. So join us as we explore the intersection of local leadership and national advocacy and delve into the crucial role of the FCM in shaping the future of Canadian municipalities. This is Municipal Affairs. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by getting to know what sort of what you're here for, and that is you have decided to put your name forward for third vice president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities at this year's upcoming convention in Calgary, Alberta. What was that decision based on, Katie? It was based on a lot of conversation, but also with my experience. So I first joined FCM as a non-board committee member back in 2019. It was a decision that at, at that point, uh, again, unanimous support from my council back when I was just a committee member. Um, but I also had encouragement from uh, local uh, elected officials who were board members. So Tanine Rudick was a FCM board member at the time, and Lisa Jensen and Bev Esslinger encouraged me to go for the committee position. Then in 2021, 2022, and 2023, I ran for the FCM board and was successful in all three times. So this is just the next progression in my role and advocacy within FCM. So most of our listeners are municipally focused, but there might be people who are tuning in who may not understand what FCM is or what FCM does. So in your words, what advocacy work does FCM do that you're hoping to continue, but also improve on if you are successful in your run as third vice president? So FCM has municipal governments representing 2,100 members across our great country. They represent 92% of our Canadian total population are members within FCM. The work FCM does, again, is focuses on local governments or municipal governments and advocacy towards what they need to, from the federal government. One of the, the most significant body of work that FCM is currently working towards is a new municipal growth framework with the demands that we are having with the unprecedented growth and um, uh, migration to our country that is desperately needed for infrastructure funding and things like that. But we represent municipal leaders from across the country to advocate towards the federal government. So I, I, I'm going to ask kind of a stupid question, but I think it's an important one for, from my standpoint. But how does a councillor from Strathcona County address issues in all parts of this country? Because we are a diverse country from coast to coast to coast, and every municipality does have certain issues that are connected, but there are very unique issues in every single one of our communities. How do you see yourself in your role as your experience in addressing those unique challenges that every community faces in that role as third vice president? So FCM has 74 board members from across the country, prairies, territories, um, BC, Ontario, Quebec, and Atlantic provinces are all represented. Each one of them are the experts within their communities that come to the board level to have these conversations. I will never be an expert in what's going on in Torbay, Newfoundland. Um, so that is something that I look towards my colleagues to bring that forward, to bring those resolutions from their members forward and educate and have those conversations at the committee level when those resolutions come forward, but really share that. So myself running for third vice, pre vice president for representing prairies and territories would be to advocate again, representing our base, 
but also learning from those that are the experts in the areas. Uh, Strathcona County, we are unique where we're both rural and urban. So I have the, the knowledge and skill sets. It's a little bit different. I'm not just a city girl and I'm not just a country girl. I represent a, a specialized municipality that's a little bit different that brings that education base to me, but I will never be the expert across the country, but that's what I rely on my, my colleagues and coworkers that come forward to the board level. So we, we, I want to talk about your platform for a second, if you don't mind. And we, prior to this, we did not have any conversations. So these, these are sort of uh, questions that I just uh, got to know. What are you running on? What are, what's the platform that you're running on that you want to see uh, installed into FCM or added on or expanded on at FCM if you are the successful candidate? FCM has a, a fantastic framework. There's been decades of work done by predecessors to really build upon the municipal framework that is desperately needed. Myself specifically going forward was to still advocate for that, but there's still a little bit of changes that are needed, some governance structure. I've been on the government's uh, committee prior to last two years, not this year as an official committee this year, I wasn't appointed to that committee, but really diving in to see where the representation is. Uh, Strathcona County, we have a population of 100,000 that makes us a mid-sized uh, city, or not city, but mid-sized municipality base where some of the advocacy and what we see at the federal level, we kind of get skipped over it and forgotten about where there's different needs, where we do have the demands of a city, but we don't necessarily have the big city and the big city mayor's caucus uh, focus and resources that we get from the federal government. So I think there's an added extra focus that's needed for the type of municipality that I represent. So, okay, again, I, I, I'm going by what I've been hearing because I've been attending conferences, I've been speaking to municipal leaders from across Canada, and you're right. The smaller communities and that 100,000 and less feel like they're being sort of looked over by federal even and even provincial governments. How do you bring smaller communities issues onto the national stage when you have a Toronto, you have a Edmonton, you have a Regina who sort of, and I don't want to say take up all the oxygen, but sort of do uh, take up a lot of time. And there's a lot more population base there. So po uh, politicians will look there rather than into those smaller mid-size or even smaller rural communities. It's about representation. It's about coming forward and being present. Uh, Rebecca Blythe, so she'll be the first vice president coming up uh, as it switches over in June. So she was this as a councillor from Vancouver. So her voice is very strong. Uh, Big Cities Mayor Caucus, they have their own representation at the executive table. Being a table officer as third vice president would put me on that executive table. And that's where we need a voice for that, um, that grouping. We need to be present. We need to focus in if there's different resolutions that are needed to drive. Look at our municipal framework and the funding uh, towards some of the funding towards transit. I know our municipality, we weren't successful in a federal grant because we didn't have the same infrastructure or needs or can meet the criteria that the federal government was demanding for it where big cities could. So there, there is um, conversations that are needed in advocacy so they understand that it's not just the big cities that are dealing with the growth impacts. It is across the country in the smaller, in the rural, in the northern territories as well. Can, I, can you give me a real life example of your time as a councillor in Strathcona County where you have advocated for issues that often might have been a little bit more, not as prim prominent as in everyday life, but you still thought it was an issue that people needed to take serious? Are you referring at the FCM table? FCM table or even around your own council table, because the, the role of the FCM is to advocate and be sort of be similar to what your role as a councillor or mayor or whoever you are in your municipal life and do that on the FCM uh, table. So for your perspective as a councillor or even as the FCM uh, in the board of uh, directors, was there an issue that you said, OK, we need to advocate for this so that way it can be sort of at a national level? I, I have a really good one for FCM. So as a non-board committee member, one of the first ones that actually came uh, towards, I was on the Environment and Sustainability uh, Standing Committee, and it was a resolution from Strathcona County to have support for pipelines um, and infrastructure to come forward. 
So again, it was placed into the environment uh, committee, still unsure why I went, went specifically to that committee, but thankfully I was a member there and I was able to advocate for it. Um, instead of the recommendation to eliminate it as not to be part of our policy, what came about of it was again, discussions that again, the Western, so it came from West, so Western Economic um, Task Force was then created because there were specific needs that the, not just Alberta, but Western and also BC is included in the prairies, needed specific economic focus. So the West Task Force was then created, um, passed through an amazing document. I don't have it right now in front of me or the name of it, but the West Task Force uh, resolution, again, specific body of work that you can find on the FCM website as part of our advocacy as well to really focus in those issues. And that was something, again, it was a resolution from Strathcona County that came forward. It almost died in committee level but I fought for it and my colleagues did as well and saw that there was a need not just for support of pipeline, but other uh, economic interests that the Western provinces weren't getting the focus from the federal government. So th this brings you into a whole new level of advocacy work. And as the table officers at FCM, uh, bilingual is a must because we have a province that is very bilingual, which is Quebec. And also even in Alberta, we do have bilingual communities, Beaumont, Legal, even St. Isidore up in North uh, Western, <laughs> Western uh, Alberta. Uh, how's your French uh, do it? Are you taking French classes or were you already bilingual prior to this? Uh, merci pour la question. Uh, j'ai fréquenté l'école uh, française jusqu'à la huitième année. Alors, j'ai de nombreuses occasions um, d'utiliser mes compétences en français, mais je ne qualifiquais pas de bilingue. Uh, what I said, I'll translate it for you, was I was in French immersion up until the eighth grade. Uh, my parents were immigrants to, to Canada, but felt that it was necessary for my sisters and myself to be bilingual. I do not consider myself bilingual, but I can um, carry French pretty good. It's more conversational French, I would say. It's something I'm still working on. My children were in French immersion as well, um, up until the eighth grade and seventh grade as well is when they switched over into English. So I did get to practice reading and things like that. And at the FCM table, I have had conversations where I've sat down with our Quebecois and, and was able to still understand and have uh, conversations with them. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. So this job, this new position that you're running for will take you out of Strathcona County a lot. And as a board a tabled officer, that means you're going to be in Ottawa, you're going to be cross, crisscrossing the province, not that you're not doing or crisscrossing the country, not that you're not doing that already as a board of director, but this will be another level. Uh, you would not be doing this without the backing of Strathcona County, but are you up for the job? Because your first priority, I'm assuming, would be Strathcona County, but you, you're taking this new step. Um, are you up for the challenge of balancing your municipal life with FCM life? Absolutely, 100%. I, again, as I already mentioned, I have unanimous, unanimous support of my council to do this. Part of that support has been in the past few years, looking when we do uh, committee assignments um, at our local and regional level to really see where the workload is fair and even across the board for all of us. So that's taken in consideration as well. For Strathcona County and to represent prairies and territories, this is a, a great honor and a great amount of respect um, to be able to have that. And to have the put Strathcona County on a federal uh, podium would definitely exemplify what the great county we are. Now, back home, of course, you know, my husband and children, I, I talk to them about it as well, because especially the year when we go into the presidency and first vice president, there is a lot more of demand and, and pull away from your community and your family. But it's something because I am a counselor, uh, so I'm counselor, I'm not the mayor. They, I do have a little bit more flexibility. And in my role in the Strathcona County, I'm also a full-time council member. So I don't have an, an additional job. I don't have additional employment. This is my employment and this is my responsibility that I can commit fully to and be present for my community, but also for FCM as a table officer. So you, you say you have the council's backing, you have your family's backing, which is the priority number one in any situation is family backing. But did you talk to the residents as well? Because this is, they've elected you to do a job and now you're going out and doing a similar job, but on the national stage, are residents behind you as well in this endeavor? 
is not something I've specifically gone out and, and talked to people. I have been telling people as I've been running into them that this is something I'm going for. I mean, I've been doing my work with FCM for five years now. So in that course of time, there was the 2021 election where I was reelected into the role as counselor when I was doing my work with FCM. So it's very seamless. For example, on Friday alone, I was at three different events representing Strathcona County and it didn't deter or impact uh, my work at all. So it, it's something I'm able to do, but it wasn't a specific conversation where I, I polled or asked um, my residents, but they haven't said anything about my commitment to the community uh, so far. I'm very active um, with my family in the community, but also as Councillor Burgoffer in the community. So we're about 15 minutes into the interview, and I want to start talking about between now and June 9th, when election time is in Calgary at the FCM convention. Um we will probably not talk about everything that we could possibly talk about. How can people reach out to you? As I have listeners from across Canada who are municipally focused and any municipal official at FCM gets to vote. It's not just Western uh, provinces and the territories who get to vote on third vice president. It's every single municipal delegate, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. How can they reach out to you? How can they learn more about who Katie Berghofer is? Uh, well, my email, so katie.bergoffer at Strathcona, just back over there, strathcona.ca is one great way uh, to reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook, Counselor Katie Bergoffer on Facebook, Insta, uh, I'm Katie Berg on Instagram, and in on X or formerly Twitter, uh, Katie in the Park. So any of those, message me, follow me, I'll follow you back. Uh, that type of scenario, you can reach out. And um, I will also have a profile, so I will be updating my profile on the FCM candidate page, which you can also access and will have all the information as well as my phone number. Uh, so for the links to all of uh, Councillor Berghofer's uh, social medias, they're in the show notes, so check them out if you want to follow and reach out. So this is the time where I'm going to hand over the microphone to you before I ask my last question. And I want you to pitch to the people who are listening to this, who are watching this, who are thinking about voting for third vice president if they're at the convention. Why should they vote for Katie Berghofer for third vice president for Federation of Canadian Municipalities? And take as long as you want. So, you know, over the past five years, my commitment with FCM, I've really grown in my roles and my responsibilities. Um, I've, I have a proven track record with my work ethic. My tenacity just doesn't stop. Um, I also have the empathy and understanding to know that I don't know everything, but I will work towards and get the solutions that'll be for the best for the municipalities across our country. Specifically, I'll be at the table as a table officer representing prairies and territories. It's my commitment to those the provinces and the territories I'd be representing to re truly represent, to understand and be present and to visit them as well, to have a great understanding about who they represent and who they are. So you are less than a month away from that election what do you do now what what is the moments that you need to do to reach out to these uh, to candidates not to candidates to municipal leaders who are going to be attending is there anything that's on your agenda for the next few weeks or is it and i hate to say this in the political terms is it a listening tour is it just listening to the people who are advocating at their own local levels on their local issues Right now, it, it, it is a bit of both. It's more of a, again, sharing that I am running. Obviously, we had um, RMA and Alberta Munis back in the spring early, earlier on in the year. I've been to various other events, including the State of the City with Mayor Sohi on Friday, where I'm, I'm sharing that I am running and, and educating them and sharing my viewpoint, but also listening to them as well, I think is key. There's a short amount of time that we have to communicate and reach out. I have various regional um, events and activities that are taking place that I will definitely maximize the opportunity for face-to-face -to, -face to talk to the different delegates because I do know in my conversations, a lot of Alberta is coming to Calgary, which is gonna be fantastic to have both um, the RMA and Alberta Munis. So councillors from across and mayors and reeves across Alberta coming down and seeing it at a national level in Calgary will be amazing. 
Counselor, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Oh, one last plug, if you don't mind. Uh, your social media pages will be in the show notes uh, to reach out. I highly recommend if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, reach out to Katie, reach out to all the candidates, because an informed electorate is a better electorate, and we got to make sure that we vote for the best person in that position. So, Katie, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and doing this. And reminder to everyone, please reach out to Katie and all the candidates who are running. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Now, before we let you go, we just want to make it a special note. We will do our best to ensure that all candidates running for table officer positions at this year's FCM conference in Calgary, if a contested election takes place, has the opportunity to sit down with us to talk about their candidacy. So be sure to hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed, as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.